Hi everybody, I'm Master Kelly. Welcome to the Sonic Frontiers Martial Art Lesson. In this lesson today, we're going to be rescuing Knuckles, Tails, and Amy from an evil robot that has captured them. Before we get started though, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe so that way you don't miss out on new videos. Let's get started. Can you? Can you? Awesome. We're going to start with a warm-up. We're going to count to five in Korean. Repeat after me. I'm going to say, Hana, do it, set, net, toss it. Good job. Awesome. Rotating arms. Ready? Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good job. Going the other way now. Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good. Awesome. All right. Reaching for your toes just like this. I'm going to say, Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good. Nice. Now, one more stretch. Feet apart like this. Arms crossed. Head down to the middle. Ready? Hana, do it. Set, net, Awesome, good job you guys. Awesome, all right, shake your hands, shake out your legs. Awesome, all right, shut yet? In ye. Awesome, all right, we're gonna head to the first place where Tail has been captured. We're gonna use the Chaos Emerald right here to use Chaos Control to go back to a very, very early time in Sonic's life. Okay, we're gonna go to Green Hill Zone. Ready, let's use the Chaos Emerald. Awesome, all right, portal is opened up. Let's go to Green Hill Zone. Okay, looks like we're on an island. It looks a lot like Green Hill Zone. I see palm trees. I see robot monkeys everywhere. Oh no. Okay, these robot monkeys are gonna attack us. Here's what we gotta do. Hands up, buddy stance. Awesome, all right, we're gonna kick them away one at a time. There's about 10 of them. So we're gonna do 10 front kicks, okay? Ready? When we do a front kick, we bend our knee. We snap our leg just like that. Let's do 10 in a row. Everyone say, Hana. Good, do it. Good, set. Good, net. Good, toss it. Awesome, all right, let's do the other leg this time. We gotta get five more, ready? Hana. Good, do it. Set. Good, net. Toss it. Awesome, good. All right, let's go ahead and run through Green Hill Zone. Let's run. Awesome, all right, there's gonna be some sky skypes on the ground, spikes. We gotta jump over the spikes, make sure we don't get them. Ready, jump. Good, good job. Ready, jump. Good, nice, good job, good work. Two more times, jump. Good, good, good. Ready, one more, jump. Awesome, good job you guys, high five. Awesome. Oh, looks like we found Tails. Looks like he's covered by some kind of ball. Huh, oh, it's electricity. You best not touch it. How can we release Tails, you guys? Hmm, maybe there's a switch somewhere that can release him. Do you guys see a switch anywhere? Oh, okay. Huh, there's two different switches. One's a blue switch, and one's a red switch. Which one should we step on? The blue switch or the red switch? Okay, most of you guys think the blue switch? Uh, oops, I stepped on the red switch. Uh-oh, what's that noise? Oh, it's an evil robot that's here to attack us. All right, you guys, let's defeat the robot. Hands up, buddy stance. Awesome, good, all right, he's gonna send out some missiles at us. Here's what we gotta do. We gotta do a duck, a jump, and then throw a back kick to hit him away, okay? We're gonna do that five times, ready? I'm gonna go duck, jump, back kick. Awesome, good job, good job again. Duck, jump, back kick. Awesome, good job you guys, two more times, ready? Or three more times, ready? Duck, jump, back kick. Awesome, good, good, two more, ready? Duck, jump, back kick. Awesome, good job, one more, ready? Duck, jump, back kick. Awesome, good job you guys, high five. All right, well, we know that's not the correct button. So let's get step on this other one. Okay, great, looks like Tails has been released. Now, before we go to the island and save Knuckles, we're going to talk about something. We're gonna talk about the rosary. So make sure you guys stick to the end of this video, and stick to the end of that lesson, and then we'll get back to rescuing Knuckles. I'll see you guys there. Did you know that there are flowers in heaven? In fact, you can create a crown or bouquet of beautiful heavenly flowers and give them to both Jesus and Mary by saying the rosary. The rosary means crown of roses, and it's a group of prayers you can say that will not only be very pleasing to God, but also promises through our Lord's mother Mary 15 special promises to all those who say it. Now, where does the rosary come from? Catholic tradition tells us that a holy priest named St. Dominic in the year 1214 was shown the rosary by a blessed mother Mary 
as a way to save th souls through her intercession. The rosary consists of 50 Hail Marys, 10 Our Fathers, 10 Glory Bees, 1 Apostles' Creed prayer, all while meditating upon the events of Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. This is a powerful way for our Blessed Mother to hold our hand and show us how to love Jesus more. And what better person to ask than his very own mother? Let's go over the 15 powerful promises of the rosary. Number one, those who faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces. Number two, I promise my special protection and the greatest graces to all those who shall recite the rosary. Number three, the rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. Number four, the recitation of the rosary will cause virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw from the hearts of men the love of the world and its vanities, and will lift them up to the desire of eternal things. Number five, the soul which recommends itself to me by the recitation of the rosary shall not perish. Number six, those who recite my rosary devoutly, applying themselves to the consideration of its sacred mysteries, shall never be conquered by misfortune. In his justice, God will not chastise them, nor shall they perish by an unprovided death, or be unprepared for heaven. Sinners shall convert. They shall persevere in God's grace and become worthy of eternal life. Number seven. Those who have a true devotion to the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. Number eight. Those who faithfully recite the rosary shall have, during their life and at their death, the light of God and the plentitude of his graces. At the moment of death, they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. Number nine, I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. Number 10, the faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. Number 11, by the recitation of the rosary, you shall obtain all that you ask of me. Number 12, those who propagate the Holy Rosary shall be aided by me in their necessities. Number 13, I obtain from my divine Son that all the advocates of the Rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during their life and at the hour of their death. Number 14, all who recite the Rosary are my beloved children and the brothers and sisters of my only Son, Jesus Christ. And number 15, Devotion for my Holy Rosary is a great sign of predestination. Now, you can offer the Rosary not just for yourself, but for anyone you know as well. If you had a family member pass away, or maybe you know someone who's sick, having a hard time, pray the Rosary for them and ask God to give them graces that they need. This is a great way to play together as a family. And as Mother Teresa would say, the family that prays together stays together. I provided a guide down below in the description if you are interested in praying the rosary as a family. Alright you guys, welcome back. Now we're going to go to the desert island and save Knuckles. Let's go ahead and use the Chaos Emeralds. Awesome. Alright, our portal is opened up. Let's go to the desert island. Awesome. Oh man, it's really hot here. I see pyramids. Not much anything else is around here. Do you guys know where Knuckles could be? Huh, I see something red. And our knuckles is red. Maybe that's him. Let's go ahead and see what this is about. Oh, this is not knuckles. Looks like a giant red pillar. Hmm. Do you think this pillar belongs to anything? Let's see. Oh. Uh oh. This isn't the pillar. It's a. Whoa. It's a robot snake. Okay, guys. Here's what we gotta do. We gotta defeat the snake. Evan, hands up, fighting stance. Awesome. All right, we're gonna do this combination. We're gonna go front kick front kick round kick okay let's do that together everyone say front kick front kick round kick awesome good job you guys again front kick front kick round kick awesome good good three more times ready to go front kick front kick round kick awesome good job good job ready and go front kick front kick round kick awesome good good one more time and go front kick front kick round kick awesome good job you guys we defeated the snake high five Awesome. Oh, would you look at that? All right, the snake left us a little triangle piece. I wonder if we can use this. Let's go ahead and put it in our pocket for now. Let's see where our knuckles is. All right, you guys, let's go. Let's start running. Awesome. All right, here's what we're going to do. There's going to be some platforms across. We got to jump across the gap 
to make sure we don't fall inside, okay? Ready? And jump. Good, good job, you guys. And jump. Good, good, good. Three more times. Ready? Jump. Good, 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 good. And jump. Good, good, good. One more. Jump. Good, awesome job, you guys. High five. Awesome, awesome. All right. There's Knuckles. Well, look like he's trapped in that ball again. Now, last time we had to click a switch. We had to click on a button. Now today, on the wall here, I see a square, a triangle, and a circle. You guys remember what piece we had last time? Right, we got that triangle piece from the snake. Let's go ahead and take that out. Let's see if that fits. Awesome. Well, look, that didn't work. Do you think we need to get the square pieces and the circle pieces too? Yeah, you're probably right. Now, where can we find that? You guys see anything that looks like a circle? Oh, what, this? Okay, great. All right, let's put that in there. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. That was a square one, right? Did I just put it in the wrong one? Uh-oh, what's that sound? Oh. Okay, there's another robot here to attack us. Let's defeat this robot. Ready? Hands up, buddy, stance. Awesome. All right, here's a combination we're going to practice. We're going to go left leg, front kick, same leg, round kick, same leg, side kick. Three times with the same leg. Ready? Everyone say front kick, round kick, side kick. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Again, front kick, round kick, side kick. Awesome. Good job, you guys. All right, two more times. Ready? Front kick, round kick, side kick. Awesome. Good. One more, one more. Front kick, round kick, side kick. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Have five. Awesome. Oh, look at that. The final piece. We got the square piece. All right, well, let me fix this one. The circle one. Put it in the circle spot. Now let's take the square one, put it in there. Awesome. All right, you guys, looks like we released Knuckles. High five. Very good job. All right, we got one more. We got to find Amy. Now here, Amy is in the sky sanctuary. So she's all the way up in the sky. So we're going to fly up there going on through the tornado. We don't need chaos control. We can just fly up there with tornado because we got tails. All right, ready, tails? Awesome, let's hop on to his jet. Awesome, all right, let's go. Awesome, all right, looks like we're flying up to Sky Sanctuary. And, uh-oh, somebody shot our plane. We're gonna fall, we're gonna fall, ready? And, oh, good thing we caught ourselves. All right, you guys, well, I don't see Amy anywhere. Let's go ahead and explore, okay, let's go. Awesome, all right, here's what's gonna happen. There's gonna be some enemies coming to attack us. When they come to attack us, we gotta throw a jab cross, so that we can get across the other side. Ready? Here come the flying robots. And jump across. Good, awesome. Make sure you keep running with me. Ready? And jump across. Good, good, good job. Ready? Jump across. Awesome, good, good. Ready? Two more. Go, jump across. Good, nice, good job. Ready? One more. Jump across. Awesome, good job, you guys. Have five. Awesome, awesome. All right, I see Amy. She's trapped in there. Now, how do you think we can get Amy out? I don't see any signs of anything. I don't see any squares or puzzles. You guys have any clues? Hmm. This is a difficult one. What do you think we should do, you guys? Hit the barrier? I sure it's a good idea? Okay, we'll give it a try. All right, hands up, buddy, stance. All right, now who can tell me the strongest kick? Because if we don't do the strongest kick, this is not going to work. Is it A, a back kick? A B, a round kick, or C, a front kick. What's the most powerful kick? What gives us the most power? I'll give you five seconds to answer. Okay, the correct answer is A. It's your back kick. Your back kick is one of the most is one of the strongest kicks you do in Taekwondo. Okay, a back kick super strong. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna power up our back kick, and so is knuckles, and so is tail. They're gonna do it with us. Okay, so hands up, fighting stance. We're gonna break Amy out of the out of the shell. Ready? And everyone say, Hana, do it, set, net, and toss it. Awesome, good job, you guys. We rescued Sonic, or sorry, not Sonic. We rescued Tails, Amy, and Knuckles. Very good work today, Chariot. Can ya? Hi everybody, I'm Master Kelly. Welcome to the Minions Martial Art Lesson. In this lesson today, we're gonna practice some fun ninja moves. And before we get started, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on weekly videos, okay? Let's get started. Chariot, Kenya. 
Awesome. We're gonna start with a warm up. We're gonna count to five in Korean. Repeat after me. I'm gonna say Hana, do it, set, net, toss it. Good job. Awesome. Rotating arms. Ready? Hana, do it, set, net, toss it. Good job. Going the other way now. Hana, do it, set, net, toss it. Good. Awesome. All right. Reaching for your toes just like this. I'm gonna say Hana, do it, set, net. Toss it, good, nice. Now one more stretch, feet apart like this, arms crossed, head down to the middle. Ready, Hana, do it, set, net, toss it. Good job, you guys. Awesome, all right, shake your hands, shake out your legs. Awesome, all right, chariot, in here. All right, you guys, let's get started with the lesson today. Chariot, awesome, all right, when I say fighting stance, right foot back, both ends up, fighting stance. Awesome, good, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna practice this combination. We're gonna go double jab to our right, and then double jab to our left. Okay, let's do that together. Ready? And double jab. Good, and double jab. Good, good job. Double jab. Nice, good work. Double jab. Good, good again. Double jab. Good, two more times. Double jab. Good, good. One more. Double jab. Awesome, good job. Now this time, we're going to go double jab cross and then double jab cross. Now, look at my feet. Make sure you always have one foot front, one foot back, and make sure you're not doing this, okay? One foot front, one foot back, and every time you move, make sure your feet are balanced, okay? We don't wanna cross our feet. We wanna make sure they're balanced, okay? So let's do that together, ready? And double jab, cross, good. And double jab, cross, awesome. You look twice as good, you twist that back foot when you throw the right hand, okay? And double jab, cross, good, double jab. Cross, good, two more, double jab. Cross, again, double jab. Cross, awesome, good job, you guys, have five. All right, you guys ready to play a game? Awesome, all right, so here's what's gonna happen. Some of the minions, they're gonna throw bananas at us. Okay, now they love bananas, but they're gonna start throwing them at us with their new machine that they invented. So here's what's gonna happen. When they throw the banana, we're gonna practice moving this way, and if they throw it this way, we're gonna practice moving the other way. Okay, let's do that together. Hands up, fighting stance. All right, get ready. And move. Good, nice. And we're gonna go back this way. Move. Good, awesome, good job. Again, move. Good, good, and go. Good, good job, go. Good, good, go. Good, two more times, go. Good, one more, go. Awesome, good job. Now this time, we're gonna practice up chin and hu chin. I'm gonna say up chin. Good, I'm gonna say hujin. Okay, you might have learned this before in other lessons, but you're just gonna practice. You're gonna have your hands up like this, okay? And you can go ahead and turn like this way. So see, we're all facing this way. Good, awesome. So when I say up chin, we're gonna go this direction. When I say hujin, we're gonna go back. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. This time, when we go up chin, we're gonna throw a jab cross, and then when we go hujin, we're gonna throw a jab cross, okay? Let's do that together. Let's do that five times, ready? And up chin, good, hujin. Good, up chin, hu chin. Good, two more, up chin, and hu chin. Awesome, good job you guys, high five. Awesome, awesome. Before we conclude the lesson, I want you guys to stick around because we're gonna talk about something really cool and really important. So make sure you stick with the end of the video. Can yet? Can yet? Awesome, all right, I'll see you guys soon. Why do we believe in God? Have you ever wondered where this belief comes from? What reasons do we have to believe in a supreme being who loves us and watches over us? The reason why this is important is because one day you may be asked to defend your faith. You may be asked by a friend, a coworker, or even a family member. One of the most sad things today is that some people don't believe in God at all, or even worse, have not been taught about God. To answer this question today, we're going to use philosophy to give five ways to prove the existence of God by St. Thomas Aquinas. Argument number one, the argument for motion. What does this mean? For instance, let's say there's a puddle outside. This puddle over time will change based on the weather. Maybe it's in the sun all day and eventually the puddle turns into vapors. Maybe it's cold and it freezes. In nature, everything is in motion. Me talking to you right now is an act of motion. Where did motion come from? Well, if you keep asking this question, you're eventually going to get to a point in time where there was no motion. Just like a ball rolling down a hill, the universe must have started with something 
starting from the beginning, and this something couldn't have been moved himself. Argument number two, the argument from efficient cause. What does this mean? Well, who are your parents? Who are your parents' parents? Who are their parents? When you keep asking this question, you eventually will get to our first parents. This is an example of efficient cause. This means that nothing happens without an effect. At some point, there would have to have been our first parents who were created from nothing. Number three, the argument for necessary being. Look at your fingers, your toes, and think using your brain. Why is yours so unique than that of an animal? Why is our air good for living and other planets in our galaxy not breathable? This is either because of chance or design. Chance would say that everything that came into being happened randomly, but design would argue that we have a purpose for existence. If you looked at all that there is in nature, they all exist for particular reasons. Trees give us air, plants and animals for food, and water to survive. Why are we given all of these things? Argument number four. Argument for gradation. What this means is that if you look at some rocks, what do they have? They basically have a form and shape, but that's it. When you look at a tree, it also has form and shape, but also has life. It can provide oxygen. When you look at animals, they do have form and shape, but can also move and interact. When you look at humans, we can move and interact and think, and we occupy most of Earth. From this argument, this tells us that there must be a being better than us. Something that is beyond our physical nature, and that is likely perfectly good and powerful. Number five, lastly, the argument from design. At the end of the day, things don't just exist for no reason. When you look at the sky, the animals and nature, and even the smallest cells in your body, they're all made for a purpose and intelligent design. It's more reasonable to believe that an artist who paints used each color carefully and painted a wonderful picture, rather than simply just throw paint on the wall randomly and create the Sistine Chapel. Hi everybody, welcome to the Fruit Ninja martial art lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna be practicing some, some slicing of fruit. Okay, it should be pretty fun. Now before we get started, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, okay? Let's get started with the lesson, Chariet, can you? Awesome. All right, let's get started with the warm-up. All right, we'll start with jumping jacks. Repeat after me. I'm going to say, Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good job. Awesome. Start rotating arms. Ready? Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good job. Going the other way. Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good. Awesome. We're going to work with some punches. Okay, so we're going to go jab crosses just like this. Ready? Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good, now this time do some uppercuts. Ready, Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good, some knees this time, right and left. Ready, Hana, do it. Set, net, toss it. Good, one last one, reaching for your toes. Just hang like this. Ready, Hana, do it. Set, net, Awesome, good job, and come back up. All right, shake your hands, shake out your legs. Chariet, Kenya. Awesome, all right, welcome back, you guys. All right, hands up, fighting stance. All right, we're gonna go right, right into a game today. So here's what we're gonna practice. We're gonna make a knife hand. I'm gonna make your hands like this. Awesome, when you do a knife hand, you wanna push this part of your hand out, and you wanna pull your fingers back. And see my thumb? It's not gonna be here. It's gonna be right here to the side, okay? So here's what we're gonna practice. We're gonna practice cutting up some fruit, okay? We're gonna see some different Fruits come up like watermelons, right? Apples, bananas, all sorts of stuff like that, pineapples, and we're gonna cut them. Now, we gotta make sure we avoid the bombs, just like in Fruit Ninja, okay? So let's go ahead and practice that. Our hands up, fighting hands, keep our eyes out. Now, okay, I gotta warn you, don't hit your TV screen, okay? I don't wanna get an email from your parents saying, hey, have my kid hit the screen because he told him to. No, don't hit the screen, okay? I'm gonna say yes, sir, if you understand. Okay, good, stay away from the screen, don't actually touch it. Okay, just do it in the air with me. Okay, good, all right, now we get that out of the way. All right, hands up, buddy, stance. All right, make your knife hands. And here comes the fruit, ready, go. Good, go. Good, 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 go. Awesome, good job, you guys, go. Nice, good work, try to keep up with me. Good, 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 just use your knife hands. Good, good. Awesome, good job, good job. Good, good work. 
Good, three more times, go. Good, go. Good, go. One more, go. Awesome, good job. All right, now this time we're gonna do hammer fists. So make your hands like this. So we're gonna be practicing throwing hammer fists this time to break all the fruit, ready? And go. Good, go. Good, go. Good job, go. Good work, go. Five more times, go. Good, go. Good, go. Good, go. Two more, go. One more, go. Awesome, good job you guys, high five. Very, very good work, awesome. All right, now we got, this one's a little more challenging. This time I want you guys to take one foot and balance like this. Now from here, we're gonna use both knife hands and hammer fists, okay? But for now, we'll do knife hands with this leg and then hammer fists with this leg, but we gotta keep it balanced, ready? All right, pick up your foot like this. Awesome, now occasionally the fruit's gonna go on this side or this side and we have to physically hop over before we hit them, okay? So try to follow what I do, okay? Our hands are here. Good, we're gonna stay here. All right, knife hands and go. Good, try to keep your balance. Go. Good, go. Good, awesome, hop over here now. Ready, go. Good, go. Good, go. Good, awesome, all right, hop over here. Ready, go. Good job, go. Good, go. Good, one more, one more. Ready, go. Good, go. Good, go. Awesome, good job, you guys. All right, now we'll switch to the other leg. Pick up this leg like this. All right, hammer fist now. Ready? And go. Good job. Go. Good, go. Good, go. Awesome, all right, hop over here now. Ready? And go. Good, go. Good, go. Good, go. Awesome, good job. All right, last one, hop over here. Ready, go. Good, go. Good, go. Awesome, good job, you guys have five. All right, you want an extra, extra hard challenge? Okay, let's see if you can handle it. Now, we're gonna do scissor kicks. Now, we're gonna do scissor front, scissor round, and scissor ax. Here's what I mean, we're gonna do this. Now, there's gonna be a big, giant fruit. A giant pineapple's gonna come out. We gotta go scissor front, and then the next one's gonna be another pineapple, but sideways. So we're gonna go scissor round. And then the final one, we're gonna come up, we're gonna do scissor ax straight down the middle, okay? Let's do that, ready? Pick up your knee. Awesome, three more fruit, ready? Scissor front. Good, nice. Now let's see if you can do scissor round. Scissor round. Good, nice, good job, buddy. And scissor X. Awesome, good job, you guys. Five. You guys did a fantastic job today. Chat yet? Can you? Awesome, all right. Now, before you guys leave, we got something really cool to talk about. We're gonna talk about St. Teresa. If you don't know who that is, I highly recommend you stick to the end. She's a really cool, awesome person that you guys should know a lot about. Okay, so make sure you stick with the end of the video and finish with the cool down. I'll see you guys soon. St. Therese of Lisieux was born marie Francoise Therese Martin on January 2nd, 1873 in Alencon, France. She was the youngest of nine children, but only five girls survived into adulthood. Marie, Pauline, Leonie, Kayleen, and Therese. Her parents are Saints Louis and Zelie Martin. Therese was spoiled, proud, sensitive, attention-seeking, and stubborn. One day, Leonie had a box of dress-making materials for dolls that she offered to Kayleen and Therese. Kayleen chose one ball of wool, but Therese took the whole box and said, I choose all. Eventually, she would learn to choose all not for her own sake, but for the love of God. Zelie Martin died of breast cancer in 1877, bringing tragedy into the previously happy family. Four-year-old Therese adopted Pauline as her mother for the next six years. In 1883, Pauline entered the Carmelite Monastery in Lisieux. Shortly afterwards, Therese contracted a mysterious illness. She was miraculously cured by a smile from the statue of Our Lady of Victories. Shortly after Therese's cure, Marie also entered into the Carmelite Monastery. Little Therese had wished to become a nun since the age of three, and now at the age of 10, she begged to join the Carmelite Monastery, following in the footsteps of her two older sisters. However, the local bishop suggested she wait till until she was older. When Therese was 13, she had what she calls her Christmas conversion. She says in her autobiography, Story of a Soul, in the instant I grew up. It was in this moment that she stopped being self-centered and became determined to save the souls of great sinners. This Christmas miracle increased her desire to become a Carmelite nun 
and give her back to the joy she lost when her mother had died 10 years earlier. For the rest of her life, she would be remembered for the joy that she radiated. At the age of 14, Therese sought permission to enter the Carmelite Monastery in Lisieux as soon as possible. He asked her why she wished to enter when she was so young. She replied, I wished it since the dawn of reason. After the local bishop refused, she traveled to Rome with her father and Kaelin and appealed to Pope Leo XIII for permission to enter. He told her, do what the superiors tell you. Therese tried again saying, O oh, Holy Father, if you say yes, everybody will agree. She wrote in the story of a soul, quote, he gazed at me speaking these words and stressing each syllable. Go, go, you will enter if God wills it. The tearful Therese had to be carried out by Swiss guards, but this did not stop her determination. On New Year's Day, 1888, permission was finally granted. On April 9, 1888, at the age of 15, Therese entered the Carmelite Monastery in Lisieux, the dessert of her dreams. Therese received the habit at the age of 16 and made her religious profession at the age of 17. On September 8, 1890, the birthday of the Blessed Mother, she took the religious name Sister Therese of the Child Jesus of the Holy Faith. During her time as a sister, she was known as an ordinary, good, reliable, and talented nun. She served as sarcastician and mistress of the novices, painted pictures, and wrote poems and short plays. Therese is most known for her little way. She spoke not of doing great things, but of small things with great love. She saw herself as a child who lived in complete dependence on God. Therese acknowledged her littleness and believed this showed more clearly God's greatness. She once said, if all the lowly flowers wish to be roses, nature would lose its springtime beauty. Therese saw herself as a tiny flower in the garden of God and believed his power shone more clearly through her weakness. She had a practice to help her count her little deeds for God that is simple and perfect for children of all ages. Therese had a string of beads, known as sacrifice beads or good deed beads. This is a simple string of beads with a medal on one end and a crucifix on the other. In between are 10 beads. Children love carrying these in their pockets and often become very conscious as they seem to seek to make Jesus happy. Every time they make a sacrifice or do a good deed or say a kind word, they can pull up a bead towards the cross. However, it's important for them to understand that St. Therese considered even picking up the small things, like a piece of string, to be an act of love. It is not the greatness of what we do that matters, but the love with which we do with them. Awesome job, you guys. All right, let's finish up the class today with the cool down. So I want everyone to go ahead, go down on one knee like this. We're gonna stretch out our hip, okay? So I'm gonna take your hand on your hip like this. I want you guys to go ahead and push yourself forward. Okay, now we're gonna count to 10 in Korean for pizza. With a nice nod after me. I'm gonna say, hana, doer, set, net, haset, yaset, irgo, either, a hope. You're awesome. All right, now this time we're gonna take one foot, we're gonna pick up our knee just like this, and then we're gonna put our hands on the ground to keep ourselves stable, stretching out our quad muscle right here. I want to say hana, doer, set, net, haset, yasin, ilgo, yider, oho. Yeah, awesome job, you guys. All right, now this time we're going to stretch out this leg. Okay, stretching out our hamstring, reaching for your toes. So I together, I'm going to say hana, doer, set, net, haset, yasin, ilgo, yider, oho. Yeah, good job, you guys, awesome. Let's turn to the other side this time. Ready, now we're gonna stretch out our hip on this side. Good, now make sure you don't forget to breathe, okay? Ready? And let's say, hana, dur, set, net, hasit, yasit, ilgo, yeder, aho. Yeah, good, nice. Now we're gonna take this foot, we're gonna stretch it out just like this. Good, awesome. All right, and let's together say, hana, dur, Set, net, hasit, yasit, ilgo, yider, aho, yeah, awesome. All right, now keeping this leg straight, toes pointing up, stretching out our hamstring. Ready? Good, yeah, well, leaning down, reaching for your toes. I'm gonna say hana, dur, set, net, hasit, yasit, ilgo, yider, aho, 
down and up. Good job, you guys. Awesome. All right, now this time we're going to go down to our stomach just like this, and we're going to stretch out. You stretch your upper body just like this. Okay? And we'll say, Hana, Dur, Set, Net, Hase, Yase, Irgo, Ider, Oho, Yer. Good job, you guys. Awesome. All right, now this time, here's what we want to do, okay? We're going to be on our knees like this. We're going to stretch out our wrists. I want you guys to take your hands just like this, turn them upside down, place them on the mat gently on the ground, and then very slowly lean back. Don't go too quick, but really slowly lean back. Okay? And let's say, Hana, Dur, Set, Net, Tasset, Yasset, Irgo, Ider, Aho, Yer, awesome. Now we're going to take our fingers. We're going to go this way now. Fingers down. Good, now leaning back slowly. I'm gonna say, Hana, Dur, Set, Net, Asit, Yasit, Yirgo, Yider, Kapo, Yer, awesome. All right, shake your hands, shake it out just like this. I'm gonna take one hand, put it on the side of your head like this. We're gonna stretch out the side of our neck here. Repeat nice lot after, be really gentle. Hold, I'm gonna say, Hana, Dur, Set, Net, Asit, Yasin, Yirgo, Yider, Oho, Yer, good job on your side now. Stretching out your neck. Gonna say Hana, Dur, Set, Net, Asin, Yasin, Yigo, Yider, Oho, Yer, good, awesome. Now this time, hands in the back for that ear, stretching your neck down. Let's say Hana, Dur, Set, Net, Asin, Yasin, Igo, Yider, Aho, Yer, awesome, good job. Relax your neck, relax your toes a little bit. Very good job, you guys, awesome. All right, now we got a couple more stretches, some standing ones. Don't so take your feet together just like this. I want you guys just to hang, just hang down like this, no counting. Hold this position. Five more seconds. And slowly come up. Awesome. Great job, you guys. Ready yet? And yeah. Hey, homeschool parents. Are you looking for an activity to help your kids get more active, more resilient, more confident, and more focused? Hi, my name is Taylor Kelly, founder and creator of Dojo Go, the complete online homeschool martial arts curriculum. If your kids have never done martial arts before, we've got the perfect solution for you. Introducing the six week kids transformation martial arts course. The purpose of this program is to give homeschool families just like you the life changing benefits of martial arts all online for ages four to 12 years old. As a homeschooler myself, I had the opportunity to meet many other homeschoolers at co-op. And I know for a fact that finding an activity like martial arts can be difficult either because A, there aren't any homeschool programs that offer it, B, the schedule doesn't work out, and C, it's really expensive. We created this program because for over 10 plus years, we've helped many children make complete life-changing transformations with our martial arts programs. And we want to extend that opportunity for you as homeschool parents now. But our videos aren't just some follow-along videos you can find on YouTube. These videos take your kids through a six-week interactive martial arts story. Meet Dojo, the orange belt monkey whose very first white belt was stolen by the evil scientist Dr. Fist. Every week the kids will learn different self-defense techniques, martial arts terminology, and gain strength and flexibility with 30-minute videos three times per week. All for the purpose of defeating Dr. Fist's minions, and maybe even Dr. Fist himself. Included with the videos are worksheets, a fully printable calendar, a map for the kids to follow along the progress, and an opportunity to test for their very first white belt and uniform at the end of six weeks with me personally via video call. Excited to start? Click the link below to join our program now.